Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, for another installment of really cool things to do with the Flipper Zero. Um, I've seen this question asked many times on YouTube and on Reddit, and I'm going to answer that question today. And that is, can a Flipper Zero control traffic lights? And the simple answer is yes, with the right hardware. And that's what I built here today to demonstrate. There's our Flipper Zero. And Flipper Zero is generating a 14 hertz pulse. Now that, just keep remember that, that pulse rate, 14 hertz. That's a magic number. That is outputting on the GPIOs. And that's coming over here to a little circuit I built today. That chip is an uh, optocoupler, so the flipper is actually powering the optocoupler, the, the uh, LED, inside it. And there, this particular optocoupler has a Darlington transistor pair uh, controlling the output. And uh, that's what we're witnessing right there. That green LED flashing is actually flashing at 14 hertz, and that is also wired over to this infrared uh, array. That's actually 42 infrared high power LEDs. And uh, that is out of a security camera. There's another one there out of a security camera. Um, easy to find these, any, any old security camera will do. Um, one thing you have to do is jumper, there's a light sensor on there, so it only works at night. I did put a jumper, right? you can see that on the back. And uh, basically, yeah, this thing's running on 12 volts. It may not look very bright because this camera that most phones have an infrared filter. Um, however, get an old camera like one of these and, you know, one of these old uh, Canon cameras and you will see, uh, I mean, this it, how incredibly bright that is. Yeah. So there you go. That's really what it looks like. You know, if you could see infrared, um, it, it's incredibly bright and it needs to be because it needs to transmit to an Opticom sensor up on the traffic light system. And I'm going to just show you, first of all, first of all, a little bit of a history on Opticom. Okay, there's an Opticom sensor. This is one that would be used on an emergency vehicle. Uh... Back in, in the 1970s, 3M, well-known company 3M, came up with an ingenious idea to be able to create, you know, make traffic lights sense that an emergency vehicle is coming. And they, they did it optically by using a light sensor that could detect strobe lights. So that worked well, but there was a problem. They couldn't differentiate between an ambulance, a police car, and a fire truck. So what they did is they developed a system that could sense either 10 hertz, 12 hertz, or 14 hertz. Um, each one had a different priority. And uh, let me just change it here. This is actually an Opticom sensor that you'll see up on the traffic light pole. And those are a lot of different Opticom uh, transmitters. And you can see they're just a bunch of black LEDs. Uh, same as what I'm using. And yeah, you can let me see. I'll go down here. Some other pictures of where. Oh, well, there's a traffic light with one on, on the top. Yeah, so depending on... Uh, where you reside, the system could be different. There's the Opticom sensor up on top of a traffic light. I typically see them around where I am. They're actually on the poles, similar to that. <clears throat> so, okay, I'll give you a little rundown here. The detector how it works. receives the transmitted infrared signal, turns it into an electrical impulse, and sends it to a phase selector located in the traffic control cabinet. The phase selector works with the signal controller's normal operation to cycle to a green light for the oncoming emergency vehicle. Traffic responds naturally. Cross street traffic stops and traffic in front of the emergency vehicle clears. 
the Opticom infrared system is designed to initiate signal changes that seem normal to other traffic at affected intersections, reducing confusion. The infrared emitter is a forward-only transmitter, so the Opticom infrared system does not affect parallel streets. Proper programming of the signal controller timing minimizes disruption to cross traffic. The goal is smooth, rapid advance of the emergency vehicle through... In okay, I think we understand that part now. Okay, so 3M later on sold the technology to a company called GTT, Global Traffic Technologies. It might have even been a spinoff of 3M. Um, and there you go. There's our frequencies, 10, 12, and 14 hertz. Yes. Now, some of the more modern-day systems, actually, they can encode an ID number in, in, in that infrared information, which is like a vehicle number. Um, so this may or may not work on all Opticom systems. However, from what I've heard, um, it works in quite a few areas. I'm not going to say where. But yeah, if you do want to, you know, put this together and try it out for yourself, go, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop you, but it is, if you get caught doing this, it could be a problem. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Okay, guys. So that's basically it. Can a Flipper Zero control traffic lights? Well, it sure can. There we are at 14 hertz. And actually, I'm going to show you. That's 14 hertz. And then I'm going to change it. Oops, we go back up here. And 13, that's 12 hertz. And I'll slow it down. And that's 10 hertz. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, you can see. 14 has more of a buzz to it, more psychedelic. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to actually attach a video about from Flipper Zero on how to use the frequency generator. Have a good one. Check out the new Flipper Zero feature, Signal Generator. Go to the main menu, Applications, Tools, and run the Signal Generator. We need the PWM generator, which means pulse width modulation. Now let's connect the blue LED to the GPIO pins to visualize the signal and oscilloscope probe to see the actual form of this signal. We can start with a signal frequency of 1 Hz, which means 1 pulse per second, and start to increase the frequency. We can see that LED is blinking faster while we change the frequency and the graph on the oscilloscope is changing too. So guys, the opto coupler I'm using is a 4N33. It's a very simple opto coupler. Um, pin one and two, uh, those are the ones that connect to the flipper and pin six is not used. Pin five and four, four would go to the negative side of your battery and five would go to the negative side of your LED array and the positive side of the LED ray would go to your positive side of your 12 volt battery. And as far as one and two on here, actually we can take a look and you can see, where is it there? The white wire is number one and the brown wire is number two. So we go over here and brown wire is ground and white wire is uh, a7, and like it says on flipper, GPIO pin A7, and there you go. That's all you need to do, guys. You got yourself an Opticom transmitter that operates at 10, 12, or 14 hertz, and uh, yeah, okay. Talk to you later.